What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and Finra Saga. And uh, for today's video I have uh, only two topics uh, and uh, both of them are really important. First of all, I will show you again that we are very close to the some kind of resolution and I will prove my words uh, within the next uh, several minutes. And on top of that, I will show you a mind-boggling uh, due diligence that was uh, made by John Tabaka in regards uh, to the wrongdoer who potentially was involved uh, in the process of uh, creation and spin-off of uh, MMTLP shares and uh, who led these shares to be tradable. So, and uh, before we dive deep into all of this, guys, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. It is very important to spread this information to as many people as we can because by this simple action, we will attract more attention to this problem and eventually we will win this battle. So guys, let's start with this news. Uh, yesterday I showed you the news uh, that basically we have another call to action from John Burda. We had to collect uh, routing data from broker dealers and uh, uh, for now you can find uh, this information on MMTLP resources and here's the tweet that was written by John Burda. I don't want uh, to read you this tweet again. I just want to show you uh, the next uh, most important update in regards to this news. And uh, here it is. Junk Savvy wrote, Did you know, just yesterday the MMTLP investor community was uh, requested uh, to gather routing information for their purchases of MMTLP. See below. And here is the uh, link uh, to the John Burda's tweet. Uh, investors have confirmed that brokers are refusing to give this information to their clients claiming they do not keep those records. They only retain them for six months and uh, one even demanding uh, money to turn over information clients are entitled to. Know your rights. If they refuse, document the correspondence and consider filing FINRA and SEC compliance. All links in for below. Psst. Let your congressional reps know too. We are warriors. We are the storm. We are not going away. And uh, she added uh, several uh, links, uh, some of them are related to the rules itself and some of them are the links to the SEC and FINRA compliant. And uh, if you don't know how long this information should uh, be kept uh, by the broker dealers, let me show you this tweet that was written by uh, Adiseos. Uh, he wrote, they have to store this information for six years and it must be easily accessible for two years pursuant to the SEC rule 240.178-4. And guys, you can Google this rule by yourself if, you, if your broker-dealer doesn't know about this. And uh, here's uh, the actual information. Uh, it is uh, the uh, 240.17a-4 rule. And uh, let me quote you this. Records to be preserved by certain exchange members, brokers and dealers. And under the letter A, you can find uh, the exact uh, answer. Every member, broker, dealer or subject to 240.17a-3 must uh, preserve for a period uh, of not less than six years. The first two years uh, in an easily accessible place. All records required to be made pursuant to uh, paragraph uh, 240.17a-3 section A-1 through section 3, 5 and 21 and 22 and analog analogous uh, records created pursuant to 240.17a-3 section E. And this is uh, the clear answer that uh, broker dealers have to have this information. And guys, let me show you this tweet. Uh, we have uh, another ally on our side. Just recently, Dennis Neal, uh, the host uh, of uh, What's Bugging Me podcast, uh, he invited Johnny Tobacco and uh, they uh, discussed uh, this issue. And uh, he wrote in response uh, to the tweet that was written by Jung Sevi this. Note, no digital record anywhere. Once stored, it's truly irretrievable. It's uh, in there. The brokers are lying. More up tomorrow on MMTLP fiasco, on what's bugging me on Ricochet. So, 
within next uh, and by the way this uh, tweet was written just eight hours ago and this means uh, within less than 24 hours we will see another podcast directly related to mmtlp fiasco where dennis neil will uh, ask this tricky question and uh, he will uh, disclose even more information in regards to this issue on top of that guys a lot of people uh, remembered about uh, this uh, major fire in warehouse let me show you this tweet that was written by john kasevic uh, back uh, in september of 2023 she wrote here is a classic just uh, days after uh, doj announced investigation uh, into criminal market trading practices what people in the industry call proprietary trade practices bartlett illinois document storage facility holding td ameritrade and charles schwab recordings goes up in flames any updates on the criminal trading practices investigation, DOJ criminal, nothing to see here, folks, move along. And uh, yes, we have to see this information, we have to see this uh, routing in four, and uh, if uh, they don't have this, uh, we have to sue them for the uh, violating the SEC rules. And uh, it is what it is. Uh, I have to admit that uh, this uh, problem becomes much more serious. And guys, why I think uh, we are very close to the resolution. You know that uh, in my previous video I've told you so and a lot of people asked me in my comment section. And uh, you can see that for now we have a lot of actions from the opposite side that are intended to push our case down. And guys, remember the phrase, a uh, very famous phrase uh, that uh, was uh, said by, if I remember it correct, uh, Gandhi. And uh, it says, first of all, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. And then you win. And in my opinion, we are on uh, the position that they are trying to fight against us. And this is the pure evidence that we are on the right path. So, let's uh, switch to the next news, uh, and this news, uh, in my opinion, is a real bombshell. Johnny Tabaka wrote this tweet, and guys, let me quote you this tweet in details. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. So, MMT attorneys uh, war Wilson Sonsini. To me, the predicate problem in MMTLB is the shares should have had a legend and restriction. Absent this, the dividends were effectively registered and free trading by default. I just wonder why Sansini forgot to do that. The crack securities guys at the wanted uh, Sansini should have said, hey MMTLP, let's make sure these special dividend shares can't trade. This was a big uh, omission, or was it? They definitely should have said, uh, let's uh, also set an X date. This way there is no drop dead date, easy to transfer agent. Every reorg department on the street would have seen the X uh, date and recall all land shares. So crucial part in this statement. I'm just digging in, but uh, it is uh, starting to appear to me that Sansini was conflicted. They represent Ansom. Sansini could have done a lot of things, but the question I'm trying to answer is, did they drop the ball to open a back door for their big client Anson? Coincidentally, a Canadian toxic founder who has settled multiple naked short uh, cases with SSC. I wonder, there is lots of big connections between these two entities uh, as well. More to come. Any info on connections between Sonsini and Anson, please DM. Let the game begin. In my humble opinion, this, game's, uh, this game runs back to TRCH and MMAT merger, and someone just uh, might have left uh, the back door wide open for their bodies. We shall see. And uh, he also added uh, this uh, screenshot uh, for the article that was written on October 19, uh, and it's titled SEC charges Canadian investment advisor with violating trading rule. And uh, here you can see that uh, this agent, this company is Ans Anson Advisors. And uh, I have to say that uh, this is a real bombshell. Potentially, that is the very first evidence that the wrongdoers were involved uh, in the process of uh, issuing uh, MMTLP shares uh, from the moment where TRCH and MMAT merged. And this is a huge huge update in my opinion and guys because of this i still think that we have a very sooner resolution of our problem 
because in general i have to say that uh, uh, a lot of uh, our headliners also commented on this news and for example richard hoffman said my question has always been why didn't corporate consay for mmat and mmtlp try to intervene prior to december the 9th when obvious shenanigans uh, as to the corporate action notices uh, were going on right under their noses. And uh, yes, uh, in order to have uh, this uh, current situation with MTLP shares, there has to be some kind of uh, insiders who was involved in the process of first all merger in between TRCH and MMAT, and second one, who was involved in the process of uh, spin-off of MMTLP shares. And because of uh, the document that was filed during this spin-off, MMTLP became easily tradable uh, with the help, so-called help, quote-unquote, uh, with the help of uh, GTS Securities and Conaccord Genuine. And uh, I think uh, we know even more with this information that we knew just yesterday. And in my opinion, it is a huge huge uh, information that potentially might lead us to much sooner resolution. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel with notification bell. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gonna live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm bad, doing no cap Only God wants you